Well, coming up on today's show, Dyson will invest in six test tracks for their EV push. The Extreme E electric racing series could be go. And California heading for 100% renewable and zero carbon power. Well, first of all, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Hello and welcome to the Friday the 31st of August edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here. With the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Thank you to myev.com for helping make this show. Myev.com is the first marketplace built specifically for buying, selling and learning about used EVs. And you can check it out online right now. Well, the big story today has all been about a UK company called Dyson. Yes, you would know them better for making vacuum cleaners. James Dyson and the company which bears his name have been quietly working on electric car technology for a little while now, particularly battery technology. A total of 2.7 billion US dollars, yes, with a B, is being spent on the project. Not that you'd know, really. It's being done very much on the down low because they've been keeping the project very much to themselves. If you compare that to another, let's say, high-profile CEO who, um, let's say, likes to go on Twitter... It's the complete opposite of doing business that way. Well, so far, they've spent $110 million restoring their campus at Hulvington Airfield in Wiltshire in the UK and are about to invest $150 million more in the next phase. The old airfield comes with a fair bit of history, actually. 1,000 aircraft were based there at the end of World War II, but now it's being reinvented as a 21st century centre of zero emission transports. Well, today, Dyson submitted plans to the local UK government to transform 750 acres of the airfield into a $260 million testing ground for their electric vehicles, a step closer to its goal of having their cars on the road and in your driveway by 2021, reports Catherine Schwab for Fast Company. Much of Dyson's bet on electric cars is based on its purported development of solid-state batteries, which are the next big technological advance beyond today's commonly used lithium-ion batteries. But building a car from scratch, let alone mass manufacturing one, is no easy task, as our friends in Fremont have had to show us and prove over the last few years. This test track is the first big piece of infrastructure Dyson's building to support its automotive dreams. Well, Dyson's CEO is Jim Rowan, and he gave us a statement yesterday, and I quote, Our growing automotive team is now working from Dyson's state-of-the-art hangars at Halvington Airfield. It will quickly become a world-class vehicle testing campus where we hope to invest £200 million, that's $260 million, creating more high-skilled jobs for Britain. We are now firmly focused on the next stage of our automotive project, strengthening our credentials as a global research and development organisation, end quote. The different test tracks they're going to build do somewhat suggest that they've got some pretty lofty plans for their EVs. They're going to build a dynamic handling track. Well, that kind of track is going to help Dyson to assess and tune every EV's vehicle suspension and steering and brakes. They're going to make a fast road route. Uh, Much like it sounds, Dyson's going to use the test track to do the maximum speed tests and their advanced driver assistance systems working hard on the software. They're going to build a hill and handling road route. Uh, With twists and turns, the route's going to simulate a challenging road environment by incorporating difficult corners and altitude changes. They're going to build an off-road route where their EVs are going to simulate off-road driving using soft and varied terrain. They're going to build test slopes of varying gradients uh, to test the powertrain. And finally, they're going to build a vehicle stability dynamic platform. Now, Dyson describes this track as a large asphalt-covered area where it's going to be able to test vehicle manoeuvrability. I'll put a link to... There's lots of articles I took this story from today because it was in loads of new... I'll put a Fast Company link because their article was pretty comprehensive, actually. If you want to read more uh, about Dyson's plans, super excited about particularly their battery technology. Well, I'm a huge fan of Formula E, but not just Formula E. I'm also looking forward to the forthcoming Jaguar I-Pace-based racing series, which is going to support... Formula E. There's the electric GT racing series coming soon. They're going to be racing 
Tesla Model S P100Ds or P100DLs in the first season of Electric GT, but they're not ruling out having different types of electric cars in their series. And also an offshoot of Formula E could well be coming. It's called Extreme E. Well, according to motorsport.com, Extreme E will pit electric SUVs against each other in off-road places like the Himalayas and the Arctic. Expected to launch in 2020, Extreme E will be run by the team that run Formula E, specifically Indy 500 winner and current advisor to the McLaren F1 team, Gilda Ferran says John Belt Snyder for Autoblog.com. As Formula E CEO Alejandro Agag told Motorsport, Extreme E, he says, and I quote, all I can say is that it's a new project that will be operated by Formula E. But he did say more, adding this, Formula E will take over the operation of that new project. The new project is in its early stages, but hopefully Gil de Ferrem, who is leading the project, will do an announcement soon with more details. That's all I can say said Agag. He also suggested the race will involve electric SUVs as, and I quote, that's where the big manufacturers are going, end quote. And I love the idea of more and more EVs that you can buy and and have sitting outside your house also racing. So racing the iPaces, racing the Teslas and racing whatever ends up in extreme E. It's a bit like touring car racing. Maybe not the kind of extreme German touring car racing with all the the wings and flaps and added bits, but some touring cars genuinely do just look like the cars that you could buy on your way home from the race. So I'm looking forward to this. Well, moving on, and a couple of big bits of news, actually. Kind of firstly, energy. Secondly, how we measure our EVs. Right. Firstly, California, a bill that would set California on a trajectory towards carbon-free emissions in its electric power sector, cleared a major hurdle today with its passage through the California state's legislature. uh, The 100% Clean Energy Act sets policy that eligible renewable energy and zero-carbon resources will supply all of the retail sales of electricity in California by 2045. Well, that makes it the largest economy in the world to make such a pledge. And with everyone driving electric cars by 2045, let alone by 2030, but by 2045, every car on the road will be electric powered in California. It's a double whammy. So all the electricity produced will be renewable, carbon free, and will be driving on that power as well. Wonderful. Given its size, California is expected to influence other states now to adopt some similar legislation or even spur a national transition to clean energy. The next bit of news that's happening here in Europe, so if you're listening in North America, let me update you on something called WLTP. New automobiles registered from tomorrow, September the 1st, 2018, must be certified according to this, the the worldwide harmonised, forget the H, Light Vehicle Test Procedure. I think I got that right. So it should really be WHLTP, but it's WLTP, right? And this is taking over. This is what in America you would call the EPA, okay? Uh, According to AutomotiveWorld.com, the new test procedure provides customers with more realistic fuel consumption data and range data on your electric cars. The WLTP driving cycle is divided now into four parts with different average speeds, low, medium, high, and extra high. Each part contains a variety of different driving phases and stopping, accelerating, braking. Each engine and transmission combination of a certain vehicle has to be tested uh, with the most economical as well as the most fuel intensive vehicle equipment. So every possible combo of a car that you sell has to have a certificate now. And this is where it gets kind of interesting here in Europe. Uh, Matthias Schmidt, who I highly recommend, he's at Auto Schmidt on Twitter following uh, because he is an expert on automotive insights. And he said this today, as far as I understand, as things stand at present, Europe's best selling model last year, the VW Golf, will not be available to buy from Saturday. According to a press briefing from VW, Golf wasn't on the list of models that they'd had confirmation that they were allowed to sell. Now, given this is VW, and given what they've been through, you think they wouldn't get themselves into a 
bit of a spot of bother to do with anything to do with emissions. You don't want those headlines, do you, if you're VW? However, because you have to test every combination of engine and transmission, well, they see, they've got quite a lot of them. So they've been very busy. Uh, and a VW statement, actually, I've been able to get hold of, said this, and I quote, the company will be very close to achieving full, ab- full availability for the entire range of vehicles in three months. To keep waiting times as short as possible for customers, Volkswagen is using systematic storage of vehicles. For example, at the new airport in Berlin. If there is already WLTP approval, there's no impact on cars. In other cases, delivery times could be delayed by weeks or months, end quote. So, because they're not allowed to sell the cars, they're going to carry on making them at the same rate, but then they're going to store them in big outdoor car parks. And what other car maker recently had to store some cars in outdoor car parks and well yes every tesla short thought the world was going to end because tesla was storing some cars i haven't seen too many of them on twitter today complaining that vw is going to have to start stockpiling cars because they're not allowed to sell them yeah they're not giving them a hard time on twitter are they that's a kind of interesting point. An earlier VW report said this, and I quote, The WLTP standard will be introduced in the EU28 countries, Norway, Iceland, Switzerland and Liechtenstein, as well as Turkey and Israel, as countries that follow EU regulations. Outside of Europe, well, Japan is going to intru- introduce WLTP in modified form and China is going to use it for emissions. In addition, India and South Korea will introduce WLTP. At a later stage, uh, the new test procedure will account for conventional combustion cars and hybrid and EVs. So what I've not been able to find out, and I've been looking f- for actually more time than is healthy on the internet today, whether they have, because it's a simple one, the e-Golf doesn't sell in huge numbers, but it's a simple, it's a one-off model. There's no different kind of transmissions and powertrains. It's just the e-Golf. There is one of them. Whether they just put that through, got the certificate for it, got the WLTP rating on it, and like, okay, we can sell that. Or whether, it would be interesting if they haven't done that and aren't selling the e-Golf, because it's just one car. So you think they would maybe just put that one through? I'm not sure. We'll wait and see. I'll try. I'll keep on digging. I'll keep on seeing that if from from tomorrow, the first of September, whether they are allowed to sell the e golf. I should point out, by the way, they're not stopping taking your orders. Not, if you walk into a VW dealer, it's not like they're gonna. They're not shutting the doors. You can still buy a car. It just depends on when they get the certificate to be actually be able to sell it. And finally. Peugeot is launching an electric version of the next generation 208. Incredibly popular car. The compact Super Mini is going to be fitted with an electric powertrain and battery pack to enable full zero emissions driving, according to the Extra Express newspaper here in the UK. Uh, speaking to Autocar, the company's design boss, whose name is Gilles Vidal, he said the company feels like they don't need to shout about the fact that the car is going to be electric. It's likely to gain a smooth and flat front grille. It's all about improving aerodynamics. If you haven't got to cut holes in the front of your car to cool a giant combustion engine, well, then you wouldn't put holes in the front of the car because nothing needs cooling. So much better for aero. EVs have always been much better for aero. Uh, and so any in-car electric specific options, uh, nothing too much that screams EV on the exterior, though, he says. Peugeot's owner the PSA group and its Chinese joint venture partner, Dong Feng, have developed an EV-specific version of their platform, the CMP, the Common Modular Platform, right? And it's going to underpin the new 208. The so-called eCMP architecture is going to be the basis for many PSA cars. And Gilles Vidal didn't believe that establishing an EV sub-brand is what they should be doing. So with VW... We know that they've got the ID range. So we know the first one, the Golf that's not a Golf, looks like a Golf, shaped like a Golf. It's not the Golf. It's called the ID Neo. And then there's going to be the Cross with all the Zs and Buzz with all the Zs. And it's a separate sub-range. Mercedes are doing the same thing with their EQ. The EQC is the first one. The EQA and the EQS we think are going to be around the corner not too far away. BMW do it with their I range, the BMW i3, i8, and the iX3, which I didn't have time to talk about today. There's more spy shots of that. It'll be on tomorrow's podcast. And Peugeot not doing that. There'll be the Peugeot 208, and there'll be probably the hybrid version, combustion version, and I imagine there'll be 
Oh, and this just happens to be the full electric version. So no sub-brands for them. What do you think? Is that a good way of doing it? Is it not a good way of doing it? Will it cause customer confusion? Will it cause customer clarity rather than having lots of new names to try and remember? Let me know in the comments section. I'd love to know what you think. And I'll put a link to that auto car article in the show notes. Hello to three of our latest patrons. On the Patreon website, hello to Peter Brin, or maybe it's Petter Brin. Uh, Peter Brin, I think is how I say your name, a new producer of the show. Anders Royal. Uh, I'm not sure, Anders, where you listen in, uh, I don't know where you are in the world. And I hope I've got your name correctly. If I've mispronounced it, then let me know. I'll say again, Anders Royal, I think is how I say your surname. And hello to David Partington. Now, David, David, you're a new executive producer of the show. Thank you so much for being part of helping make this program well keep your comments coming in for this week's question of the week we'll get to that on sunday i think it'll be sunday um i'll tell you why i'm not sure because uh, give me 30 seconds question of the week this week how much do you spend on charging your evs this is a question aimed at current owners of electric cars has it made a large difference to your household bill let us know in the comments because lots of people listen to this show they're ev curious And they're trying to work out, "Mm, what will I save on buying petrol and diesel? Will my house price electricity go up? So let us know in the comments how much you spend on your EV charging at home. I want to say a heartfelt thank you to the 74 patrons of this podcast, whose generosity means that you get to hear it every single day, seven days a week. We aim to entertain and inform thousands of listeners around the world every single day, uh, which is a real honour for me to do this every day, because certainly when I started it, Literally nobody was listening. Uh, like I, I had like three downloads, and I knew that one of them was me just testing it. So it's, it is incredible to see the downloads in the thousands now, and it just keeps going up and up, and I'm, I'm just seriously blown away. But I can only do that because of Patreon and you paying for the streaming and people chipping in $5 like a fancy coffee or $10 to get the extra programs on Saturdays. So thank you very much. Patreon.com slash evnewsdaily if you want to have a look. Now, I mentioned about when we'll do some shows coming up because I'm going to be heading to Norway for a week. So uh, today, which is Friday the 31st of August, going to be heading over to Norway. Not a long journey here from uh, here in the UK. Uh, Going by boat, which is a little bit of a moral dilemma because, of course, diesel engines on a boat, not driving an EV uh, to Norway. So definitely looking. I'm trying to find some way that I can offset my carbon, find out how much carbon and emissions, at least the boat has used and then support a scheme online so if you know anything by the way either carbon offset or i've got some suggestions already and they're all brilliant and if you hear of any more let me know any donations that i can make projects that i can help fund that in some way offset this boat that i'm going to be getting on to go to uh, norway to have a look at the ev market over there in some months 50 percent of all cars sold have been electric cars and so it's definitely a place that i feel that i need to go to have a look around and and chat to a few people so that's what i'll be doing it just means that i don't know when i'll be making the podcast there'll be a break there'll definitely be a few days break and uh it there might be a bit sporadic um i'll take the mics and the laptop and everything when i'm over there but i don't know about internet i don't know when i get a chance to write the program uh we do some touristy stuff as well because my wife's going with me so it's um Bear with me over the next few days. After 228 shows of not missing a single day, well, for the first time, there's going to be a couple of days that we miss a show. Like I say, there's been 228 days in a row, and all of those are online, all the usual podcast places, and the blog, evnewsdaily.com. Listen to the old ones for free if you want to. They're all online. I'm never going to take them down. If you want to get your fix of some news, and if, if in return you can leave a little rate and review, holy moly, that would be amazing. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you probably tomorrow. <laughs>